Have you ever given your money to someone else in the hope that they will help you increase that money? Hey guys, my name is Dan and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's still widely debated and certainly has convincing arguments depending on the angle you're coming from. So in this video we're going to talk about two contrasting approaches to investing, that is passive investing and active investing. So without further ado, let's get into it. When we hear the words active investing, many of us will think of mutual fund managers, hedge fund managers, etc. They go through the process of doing a lot of research, valuations, digging through financial statements of companies, and looking at many aspects of the company's industry and the economy in general. And using this information to sell, buy stocks, adjusting their holdings and their portfolio from time to time. And what's the point of doing all this, right? What are they trying to achieve? This is all for a simple reason, and that is to beat the benchmark or the market. To get those alphas, the excess returns in relation to the fund's benchmark. But you can do all these things yourself too. Find the companies you like, do the research, do the homework, essentially becoming your own manager. No doubt it takes a lot of time. A lot of work, a lot of reading, and just a lot of time by being in the market and training yourself to have a suitable temperament for investing. We're all busy people and maybe we don't have the time to do all that research on individual companies or maybe it's all a bit too much to try and understand financial statements and dig deep into the business. And that is why investing in actively managed funds is so popular because there are professionals who can do all this for you. You're supposed to enjoy the flexibility that active investing brings, the ability to have control and to take advantage of certain situations. For example, when a stock is unfairly punished because of certain market-wide events, and to also enjoy the ability to rebalance the portfolio when required, to manage and hedge risks using financial instruments such as derivatives and so on. In Morningstar's most recent semi-annual report, on active and passive funds, they found that 48% of active US stock funds survived and outperformed their passive peers last year. That's actually an improvement from 2018, which was only 38%. But that's still pretty low, that's like a fail pass rate. There is not much point in looking at just one year's performance though. At the end of the day, if you're an investor after excess returns, then you'd want to invest in a fund where it's consistently beating its benchmark. Even though there is no guarantee for outperformance the next year, having that track record is somewhat comforting. These active funds charge a premium management fee because of all the things they do behind the scenes. Some even have a load, which is a sales charge required at the time you purchase the fund. So if you invest in one of these active funds, you should be expecting the fund to outperform its benchmark, at least by the amount you paid for in fees. But do more expensive funds have better performance than low-cost funds? Here's another table by Morningstar. You can see from the table that the cheapest funds have a much higher success rate compared to the most expensive funds over a 10-year period ended December 2019. And success rate defined as the percentage of funds that went on to survive and generate a return in excess of its benchmark over the period. So on average, expensive funds don't perform better what about picking the right manager? Picking the right person for the job may increase the chances of success. But how do you do that exactly? How do you pick a manager that can keep outperforming? Peter Lynch, arguably one of the greatest fund managers of all time, managed the Fidelity Magellan Fund from 1977 to 1990. And guess what his average return per year was? A whopping 29%. Following his famous philosophy of invest in what you know helped Fidelity grow this fund from 18 million to 14 billion during his time. This fund was also at one point the best performing fund of a 20 year period. So what happened to the Magellan Fund? Let's have a look at their performance since 2010. This is a chart from the Fidelity website. The yellow line is the S&P 500 index and the blue one is the fund. Surprisingly, or not surprisingly, the S&P 500 has outperformed the Magellan Fund over the most recent 10-year period. Unfortunately, this fund has had six different managers in the span of 30 years, unable to match Peter Lynch's performance from those days. 
If you're an existing fund investor, would you give the new manager time to prove themselves? But the bet is, letting them prove themselves requires time, and you could end up underperforming the benchmark again. Last year, a Bloomberg article mentioned that the total amount of assets in index tracking equity funds reached 4.271 trillion, surpassing 4.246 trillion for active funds for the first time in history. So what led to all this? Basically, this has been driven by the cheaper fees that come with index funds and how most managers are lagging behind their benchmarks. So is passive investing better then? With passive investing, your goal is to be steady and consistent. The strategy you employ is simple, but it's also very boring. And that's to buy an investment and hold for the long term with minimal trading and ignoring any short term setbacks. There's no time in the market nor trying to take advantage of certain situations or trying to predict, forecast any events. You're not meant to beat the market, but rather match the return of the market. And the main ways you'd do this are through index funds. ETFs are in general the easiest way to go about passive investing. You could also buy into passive mutual funds, but they can be more expensive because of the way they're packaged. But compared to active funds, you can enjoy much lower fees. Some of the most popular ETFs, like the Spiders SPY and Vanguard's VOO, which track the S&P 500, have fees of around 0.09% and 0.03% respectively, compared to around 1% for active funds. And that is really one of the main reasons ETFs are becoming so popular around the world. The other quality of passive investing is that it takes the psychological aspect or the emotions away. In Ben Graham's book, The Intelligent Investor, he talks about this hypothetical character called Mr. Market, who's essentially a business partner of the reader. And Mr. Market frequently offers to sell his share or buy the reader's share of the business. He is basically bipolar and lives by emotions and irrationality. The prices that he can offer the reader can be extreme, from pessimistic prices to optimistic prices. The reader is supposed to understand and know that Mr. Market is there to provide options and offer opportunities for the reader to take advantage when the time is right. And this really is a simple illustration of how an investor can be swayed by the movements in the market. Warren Buffett also made a similar analogy in the most recent Berkshire annual meeting. If you haven't watched that meeting yet, uh, a card should appear on the top of this video, which will link you to the summary video I did a couple of weeks ago on it. And he said that if you can't handle the movements in the market psychologically, then maybe you shouldn't be buying stocks at all. And what he meant was, if you want to be a stock picker, then you need to have that temperament because that's how the stock market works. Otherwise, when the opportunity comes, you won't be able to take advantage of it. And that is why Warren Buffett keeps on encouraging the average investor to just invest in index funds. Okay, so we've talked about both passive and active investing. Let's do a quick recap. So for active investing, there's high cost in general, whether you're picking your own stocks or buying into an active fund. Um, there's high utilization of resources and high management fees respectively. Um, you're basically entrusting your wealth to the manager, trusting their instincts and their skills, but there's no guarantee of outperformance. However, active investing allows greater control and flexibility in strategy, such as using derivatives like options. Active investing also gives the manager and the investor opportunity to take advantage of certain situations like mispriced or undervalued stocks. Passive investing, on the other hand, uses a low cost strategy to buy and hold for the long term. Most popular way to implement the strategy is through index funds with low management fees. This approach takes away the element of emotion and ignores any downturns in the short term. The downside is that you're limited to only specific funds or indices and you'll be getting what the market returns, so there's no outperformance. Although there's clear advantages and disadvantages of these two approaches, there's no requirement that we have to take either extremes. And sometimes it is beneficial to have a mix of approaches, but it all depends on where you are in your investing journey and how much you understand about the risks of investing in the stock market. I hope you have a better understanding of these two approaches and have a better idea of which approach best suits you. 
Thanks for watching and do comment below if you have any questions and make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified of the next video. Otherwise, have an awesome day.